Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Oh, yeah, folks. Welcome to the RLM Radio Broadcasting Network. <laughs> I'm Grim Nair here. This is the Grim Leftovers Show. This is episode 39 here on September 16, 2018. No, it should be 2019. I got I got a little boo-boo in my thing there. <laughs> All right, no big deal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm only a year off. No big deal. Anyway, this is the last Grim Leftovers Show of the summer of 2019. We'll be back, of course, next week, but it won't be summer any longer. That will be the beginning of fall. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I just cracked myself up looking at that there. Oh, 2018? No, that's wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, all the people out there listening and all the various places you may be listening in from, whether well, that be right here on reallibertymedia.com, rlmradio.xyz. You want more volume? What the hell? It's it's pegging the meter already, man. Um, I'm not sure what you're looking for. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it should be good. It should be good. Everything's uh, th there as far as I can see, unless I... Got... No, no, everything should be fine. Oh, wait, let me look over here. Let me just take a peek over here on this end. No? Well, I could, I could bring this up some. A little bit. All right. Check, check, check. All right. All right. Test. All right. We'll see if that's any better for the people once it gets around to getting to them. Uh, but uh, well, we'll see. It should be a little bit. Anyway, so uh, all the places you could be. Freedom, Freedoms Network. Uh, RealLiberty.org. Maybe you saw the tweets over on Twitter or the comment over there on Minds.com. Welcome to y'all. Yes, indeed. We are ready. We are here. Ah, uh, it's been a nice, cool day, although it's a little warm out there right now. It was only supposed to get to like 73 today, but it's 79 right now, so, eh, better than 90 like it was last week, so. <laughs> it's the end of summer, you know, it's 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 hanging on to that last little bit saying, no, I'm still here, I'm still summer, but you're not. <laughs> Anyway, um, th this first, uh, uh, let me get, do I have anything special to tell you about? First off, let me think. No, I think we're good. Um, I think everything's, I don't think I have any special announcements or comments. Uh, but I will say that anybody that wants to do a show uh, here on reallibertymedia.com, let me know and I'll get you set up. There is a form uh, on the uh, reallibertymedia.com, it's the contact form. And it's got a little drop down there. And one of the options of that drop down is, hey, I want to do a show or something along those lines. And so you fill that out and it comes right to me and, I, and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll talk to you and get you set up. It's really easy. And anybody can do this. You just come on here and talk. Uh, pretty much like you're talking to yourself or you're talking to some friends or whatever. It's, it's nothing to be nervous about or excited or anything like that. <laughs> anyway, on to the stuff here. Uh, th this first thing, I almost forgot to put it in. Um, and mainly because it's not an old thing. As I found it yesterday over there on uh, Minds.com. It's a, a thing. It's called Seed Saving Tips. It's just a graphic. And uh, so I'll put, I put the graphic into the post-show blog. And um, I'm not really going to talk about it here. I will talk about it on Friday night, hopefully, if I remember. Uh, during the Freakers Ball, uh, but it shows you how to s save seeds from all kinds of various vegetables and fruits here. Um, so I'll let you look through that at, 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 if you uh, prefer to, if you want to. Um, and, and then uh, we'll talk about it on Friday night with the moose girl around. And and uh, it, it's cool. It's a cool thing. And uh, it, it, this is the right time of year. And that's, that's kind of why I wanted to get it in here, make sure I didn't forget. Because it's time to start uh, collecting some of those seeds from certain plants. Other ones can be collected year-round, of course. But uh, this is a good time of year to be co collecting some of those seeds for next year's crop. Because it's harvest time. We had the harvest moon on Friday, Saturday there. So uh, check that out. 
All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let's kick it off here. <laughs> I got a bunch of stories all lined up for you. Old stories. Stories I didn't get to back in the on the Freakers Ball. That's how this show works. That's why it's called Leftovers. Mm-mm, good. I like me some leftovers. <laughs> all right, from the metro.co.uk here. Posted up on August 12th, 2019. Parents are paying their children to get them off of their phones. Now, before I get into the article and what they have to say about it, let me just say this. You're the parents. You're paying for those phones. Those are your children. They have to do what you tell them to, more or less. Take their phones away. Just take their phones away. <laughs> what, are you, what are you paying them to get off their phones? Take the damn phones away. <laughs> or at least restrict the hours that, that, you know, you don't want them talking on the phones. But according to this article, nearly a quarter of parents have given their children pocket money in order to get them to stop looking at their phones, laptops, tablets. A new survey is found. Other parents bribe their children uh, to go to bed and do their homework, the survey found uh, by Halifax found. Out of more than 500 parents surveyed, 23% paid children aged 8 to 15 pocket money to get them off of their screens, with many children putting that money back into tech by using it to pay for gaming, film, and TV streaming. So, still, they are still using it to be on screens of some type. Children receive 7.71 pounds per week pocket money, up from a little bit more than that in 2018, according to the survey. As well as getting away from the phones and TVs, 20% of desperate parents have used pocket money as a way of getting their children to bed. They're, 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 what kind of parenting is this? I mean, I don't have children. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't imagine having to deal with these little guys. <laughs> get them to, paying them to do their homework, paying them to go to bed, paying them to get off TVs, paying them to put down their phones. Holy hell! <laughs> Never heard of that. You know, I, I grew up before all this stuff, so uh, they certainly weren't going to pay me to do anything. Uh, the, only, the only payment was not whacking me upside the head, I guess. But, yeah, it's a, it's a new world, apparently. Nearly 60% of parents pay children for chores, such as tidying up their own bedrooms, cleaning, or washing up. Since when is washing up a chore? <laughs> I don't know. 30% 30, 30 of parents would be willing to withhold payment if the work was not up to scratch, they said. <sighs> In terms of pocket money spending, uh, the, the bank found 42% of children buy sweets with their pocket money. So you're giving them money to not do one thing bad, and they're, and they're using it to buy stuff that'll turn them diabetic. That's terrific. 31% use it for gaming. Eh, whatever. And 30% use it to buy toys. Around uh, more than 90% of parents surveyed said they encourage their children to save money of course, the parents probably aren't saving any money because they're giving it all to their kids. And half of the parents let the children download apps or spend money on music or film and TV streaming services, which is going to drive them right back to their phones. Exactly. Sock Puppet points out that that's the kids being in charge. Uh, well, how, how, how does that work? <laughs> Since when is that a thing? <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, man. Um, anyway, Giles Martin, head, the head of savings at Halifax, said the summer holidays represent great opportunity for parents to spend time with their children, get out and about, as well as giving a life lesson on the value of money and earning uh, their own cash. Uh, I don't know, bribing them, paying them off to do stuff they should be doing anyway. That's earning their own cash, I guess. 
I, I, I don't know. It, it seems ridiculous to me. Like I said, I don't have kids. I, I never wanted kids, and I, I don't really care for kids. <laughs> but you folks that have them, what happened to you? What happened to you? <laughs> Why is this a thing? Oh, God. I, 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 just, I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. All right, <laughs> moving on to something something I like to rant about anyway, uh, weekly, daily if I can. From the Global Warming Poli- Policy Forum, posted on, uh, well, this says 10-8, but I, I know I got this a while before this, because uh, it's, oh, oh, it's 8-10. They, they, do their, they do their dates backwards over there. August 10th, not, it's like, it can't, it's not even October yet. How can it be October 8th? All right, uh, 8, 8, 10, 2019, not 10, 8, you dorks. Um, <laughs> British farmers accuse news media of climate alarmism. And rightfully so, I would say, uh, because that's what they do. <laughs> The National Farmers Union president, Manette Batters, has accused the British media of inflating the findings of a report uh, by published, published by, uh, no, I don't know, whatever, published this week uh, by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Farm unions accuse media. The IPCC report on land use across the world and its impact on the climate concluded that better land management and dietary changes were needed. However, stop for a second. (laughs) Better land management, possibly, and dietary changes. Uh Uh-huh. The NFU president, uh, Minette Batter said it was frustrating that uh, some media outlets had inferred this meant the panel was recommending meat to be cut out altogether. However, gone through the report in detail, it's clear the IPCC recognizes the important role animal products play in the balanced diet, Batter said. When produced sustainably in low greenhouse gas emission systems, these are actually part of the solution to climate change. It is therefore incredibly frustrating to see this inflated within some parts of the media to recommend a reduction of meat consumption in the UK. I take this opportunity to reiterate that our aspiration to become net zero, reducing our greenhouse gas footprint and offsetting emissions by 2040 does not mean downsizing agricultural production. This would only export our production to countries which may not have the same standards of environmental protection. Our plan for achieving our net zero goal is focused on making the most of natural resources Within 65% of UK farmland best suited for growing grass, this means using our grasslands, which are also a huge store of carbon, to produce high-quality beef and lamb. Uh, British farmers are determined to continue reducing methane emissions through a variety of methods, including dietary changes and uh, breeding techniques. So... I guess if you feed the cattle something different, that could possibly reduce some methane. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not real sure about that. I don't know about that. But uh, as far as the, the meat reduction, I've got some stuff coming up here for you in a minute or three on that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Greenland, still not owned by Trump. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Still not owned by Trump. Um, Greenland's record temperature denied. The data was wrong, or flat out a lie, if you want to put it that way. From the, but wait, 
our algorithms can adjust for that department, comes this tale of alarmist woe. Greenland's all-time record temperature was not a record at all and never got above freezing there. First, from the whaling media, <laughs> New York Times posted an article, European heat wave, climate change. WAPO posted an article uh, that Greenland witnessed its highest June temperature ever recorded on that, uh, Thursday of that week. Climate Progress put out uh, a thing from Think Progress here that uh, Greenland hits record 75 degree Fahrenheit sets melt record as globe aims at its hottest year ever. Lies upon lies upon lies. Uh, the polar portal said record high temperature for June in Greenland. All of it, just pure freaking nonsense. All right. Now from the Danish Meteorological Institute, the DMI, via the news website, the local, the cooler reality, Danish climate body wrongly recorded, reported Greenland record heat. The Danish Meteorological Institute, which is, has a key role in monitoring Greenland's climate, last week reported a shocking August temperature of between 2.7 C and 4.7 C at the Summit Weather Station, which is located 3,200 meters above sea level and the center of the Greenland ice sheet generating a sample spate of global headlines. But on Wednesday, it posted a tweet saying that a closer look had shown the monitoring equipment had been giving erroneous results. And they reported them anyway. Was there record level warmth on, on inland ice on Friday? It said, no. A quality check has confirmed uh, our suspicion that the measurement was too high. Just like the rent. The rent is too damn high. <laughs> By combining measurements with observations from other weather stations, the DMI has now estimated that the temperature was closer to minus 2 degrees C. Record temperature ever recorded at the summit was 2.2 plus 2.2 C which was reached in 2012 and 2017, but minus 2C is still unusual at the station. Shoot out the headlines first. Ask questions later. Nonsense, nonsense, and more nonsense from the global warming wackadoos. All right. <laughs> So as I said, I was going to get to more of this uh, stopping you from eating meat because you're a dirty human and you're making the planet melt. Which is, of course, absolute freaking nonsense. But that's all right. Here we go. From Breitbart.com, posted on August 13th here, 2019. University beef ban won't save the planet but it will make students stupid and ignorant. <laughs> uh, Goldsmiths University in London has announced a ban on beef products in its campus canteens as part of a drive to become carbon neutral by 2025. Now, let me just explain here a little something before going on. Carbon neutral. Humans, and all other mammals for that matter, and other animals that are not mammals, including reptiles and fish and birds, we are all carbon-based life forms. So if you want to be carbon neutral, kill yourself. Kill yourself now. Just go away. We, we've had enough of listening to your nonsense about this carbon neutrality as if carbon is somehow evil and bad and wrong. It's not. <laughs> carbon is good. You need the carbon to feed the trees. It, it, it's just the way it works. To feed the, the plants that you survive on. 
So if you want to be carbon neutral, the only way for you to do that is just to kill yourself. And you won't be carbon neutral right away. You have to totally decompose first. And then you'll be carbon neutral. Ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> I, by, by the way, am in no means suggesting that anybody should kill themselves. <laughs> I'm only saying... <laughs> Shut up about this nonsense, about this craziness, this climate alarmism. It's insanity. But here we go on Breitbart from The Guardian. Beef products will no longer be available in the institution's cafes and shops when the academic year begins in September. While an additional 10p levy, 10 pence levy, uh, will be added to the sale of bottled water and disposable plastic cups to discourage their use. Professor Francis Corner, who took up the post of Goldsmith's Warden this month, said the college would also switch to a completely clean energy supplier, impossible, when, <laughs> when its current contract ends, and look into how all students... Uh, could take curriculum options related to the climate crisis. There's no climate crisis. There's no climate crisis. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and to select a completely clean energy supplier, absolute nonsense. I don't know what you're thinking you're going to make completely clean energy from, whether it's solar or wind or hydropower or anything else, you got to build those energy producing elements. And you're not going to do that without using some fossil, <laughs> excuse me, let me correct myself, not fossil, <laughs> oil-based products along the way to, to create your, your, your product there. And, and they're going to be made out of that stuff. So you're not going to have a completely clean energy supplier, no matter what you do. If you're considering that carbon is not clean. Going on. Expect to read a large number of similar stories in the months and years to come as the Banstorabori Killjoys. <laughs> Banstorabori. <laughs> That's a great word. Uh, killjoys of the left, and I, I don't think it's just the left either, but whatever, uh, ramp up their war on meat, this time using the relatively novel justification that it's all about saving the planet. The planet don't need you to save it. It'll, it'll do fine just on its own. Environmental stories are up bit like cockroaches. If you spot one, it usually means there are hundreds more lurking under the skirting. And sure enough, this gesture by goldsmiths... <laughs> yeah, yeah, cowboy jackets. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of sensitive folk out there. And you gotta make sure <laughs> that they understand. <laughs> Some somebody wants to take something like that to heart. Oh, I'm gonna save the planet! Boom! Yeah, see, that's bad. That that that. Uh, <laughs> I am not suggesting that. You're not gonna save the planet by doing that. So, put, put that out of your mind. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, this gesture by Goldsmiths, uh, a nothing university about which no one cares, is just f a finishing school for lefty artists and fashionistas. Turns out to be one of the numerous assaults orchestrated by the leftist hive mind against the citadel of carnivorousness. Yes, the Borg do not eat meat. This latest anti-meat frenzy was whipped up by the BBC's high priest of environmental alarmism, Roger Harabin. Harabin used the fig leaf of a recent UN report to declare on one of his daily propaganda bulletins that giving up meat 
was now vital to saving the planet. Experts from the UN had told us so, he claimed. In its latest IPCC, IPCC report, Climate Change in Land, as always, where Har Harabin's environmental report is concerned, you need to count your fingers afterward. The actual report, as Charles Moore noted, is actually quite bland and unprescriptive. The report's wording is guarded, preferring to speak about how diversification in the food system, including things like coarse grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, might help, might help, rather than telling people to drop meat. Indeed, the title of the report is Climate Change in Land, with no mention of meat. If you search it on the interwebs, not Google it as they suggest here, uh, it's cor under its correct name, it, uh, it, up, up it comes with no headlines about the eco-wickedness of meat appearing. If you search it under the variants of the IPCC report on meat, you get headlines such as that above. As always, where Harabin's... Oh, I, sorry, skipped back up. Uh, this wasn't nearly zealous enough for Harabin, who used his uh, sincere... Who used his sin, sinecure... What the hell does that word mean? Sinecure... Uh, a position requiring little or no work, but giving the holder the status of financial benefit. Okay, that's what that word is, sinecure. There's your word for the day. Who used his sinecure at the BBC to greensplain. Greensplain. <laughs> oh, mansplaining has now spread. <laughs> to greensplaining, um, what the report really meant. On Thursday morning at 6 o'clock on Radio 4, the BBC led with the IPCC story, having quickly mentioned that the report was about land use. Harabin then explained that because of the panel is made up of scientists and government representatives and has a need for UN consensus, it delivers messages in the lowest common denominator. The Reverend Roger, as keeper of the sacred mysteries, then explained what the boffins really meant. Privately, some of the scientists say overconsumption of meat and dairy products in the West can't go on. Privately. So privately that you'd never heard it yourself. Thus can, uh, <laughs> thus can some careful, rather colorless words by the scientists about issues like greenhouse gas fluxes in terrestrial ecosystems be turned into something we can all have an argument about. Farmers are disgusting, saith the preacher. Stop eating beef and sheep. We Westerners are much too fat. <laughs> <laughs> Once an environmental scare, give up meat or the planet gets it, has been given at the veneer of a respectability by the BBC, useful idiots like Goldsmiths University's new warden can then jump on the bandwagon, virtue signal about how green they are, get their faces in the newspaper, which love this kind of stupid story, and best of all, vent their authoritarian urges. Professor, quote-unquote professor, Francis Corner, the attention seeker behind this new beef ban at Goldsmith, describes herself as a fashion activist. Glancing at her CV, I can't say I notice much evidence of intellectual heft, she looks more like a professional academic administrator who has jumped from post to post by having the right politics, or wrong politics. Also, as uh, Paul Holmwood ha has politely noticed, she appears to be something of a massive hypocrite. Miss Corner may think beef burgers are bad for the planet, but she evidently thinks flying is a-okay. Okay. <laughs> Last November, she popped over to Beijing, 
for a fashion exhibit. Fashion's not going to help you out, honey. Anyway, um, I think you get the gist of that story and probably more than you wanted or needed to uh, on that. We all understand pretty much what's going on there with that. But let me jump into what possibly could be behind this. What possibly could be driving this. What drove the global warming scare? Oh, sinecure. New word for me, too. Uh, all right, anyway. Um, so, if y'all remember, there was a little bit of noise, whatever, about global warming. And then Al Gore, the man bear pig, came out with his movie, An Inconvenient Truth. And from that movie, oh, the world got scared. The, the big evil carbon... <laughs> was going to kill us all. He won he won Academy Awards. He won a Nobel Prize. He got speaking engagements, paying thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars all over the place. He became the hero of the world. He was going to save the planet just like he invented the internet. Well, it turns out, if you recall, that Al Gore's global warming scare was really about carbon offsets. And he made many, many millions of dollars on carbon offsets. You don't really hear about carbon offsets anymore because everybody realized what a scam it was. But now they got this meat thing going on. And you're hearing about all these different companies producing fake, you know, uh, plant-based meats. You got the, the, you got the Burger King, uh, KFC's doing it now. Uh, some of the other fast food joints are, are working on uh, getting rid of, or maybe not getting rid of meat, but giving you the alternative to buy non-meat stuff, hoping that everybody starts buying the, the non-meat stuff rather than the meat. Comes this article, August 13th, 2019, on the No Trick Zone. Gore moves to profit big from the anti-meat drive. Yes, the climate hustler partner at Beyond Meat is the largest investor. Al Gore is going to break it in once again. Well, wouldn't you know it? There he is again, behind another multi-million dollar money-making scheme. Al Gore is standing to rake in millions, if not billions, from World Resources Institute uh, Meat Consumption Reduction Report, one that will certainly help boost profits for the meat substitute manufacturers, in which Gore just happens to be a big stakeholder. <laughs> CNN recently reported here on the just published report from the Global Research Nonprofit. World Resources Institute, the 568-page report dubbed Creating a Sustainable Food Future recommends, among other actions, eating far less beef in order to rescue the planet. Gore Hack is WRI co-chair. According to S underscore, well, we don't want to know his name. It's a, that, well, that, that's the Twitter handle he uses, S underscore. At a thread at Twitter, uh, the WRI's co-chair is David Blood. David Blood is the former Goldman Sachs asset manager uh, head who founded Generation Investment Management with Al Gore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So the report is now looking more and more like a junk science-based instrument designed to boost the plant-based substitute meat industry, which would include major companies such as Beyond Meat. Uh, Kleiner Perkins, biggest Beyond Meat investor. Uh, Generation Investment Management is connected to Kleiner Perkins, where former Vice President Al Gore is one of its partners and advisors. Who's Kleiner Perkins? It turns out they are Beyond Meat's biggest investor, 
according to bizjournals.com. Uh, Beyond Meat is the Los Angeles-based producer of plant-based meat substitutes founded in 2009 by Ethan Brown. The company went public in May, and just weeks later, the more than, more than quadrupled their value. Of course, they spelled their wrong there. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, yes, Al Gore, partner and advisor to Kleiner Perkins, Beyond Meat's biggest investor, stands to haul in millions should governments move to restrict real meat consumption and force citizens to swallow the dubious substitutes and fakes. If taken seriously, the World Research Institute report, backed by Gore Hacks, will help move the tradition over, this, over to substitute meats far more quickly. According to S, uh, all, these, uh, all these we need to cut beef consumption to save the planet stories originate from the World Resources Institute, whose co-chair is a partner in the firm that collaborates with the main investor in Beyond Meat. Another dubious money-making scheme that reeks of ethics violations and that needs to be investigated. Of course, it's not going to happen. They're pushing this. The profits are lined up and they are going to make them. And you, you dirty, filthy, meat-eating humans. <laughs> you are destroying the planet. Quit eating meat. You quit breathing because you're you're polluting the, the skies. <laughs> Plant-based sex toys. Well, yeah, I... I <laughs> no comment. <laughs> there was some movie, I forget what it was, one of those American Pie type things, I think, where some kid screwed a watermelon or something like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that's the same, same thing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> from the Rolling Stone here on August 14th. The next recession is going to be brutal. Part A. Eh, brutal for some people, less brutal for others. It'll be, it'll be more brutal for those that believe they're in the middle class. Of course, the middle class doesn't exist anymore. hasn't for a long time now. But you believe you're in the middle class because you're making more than the poor folk. You're not anywhere near halfway to what the rich folk are making. But you think you're middle class because, well, there are people that, that aren't doing as well as you. So you claim, yeah, I'm middle. <laughs> I guess you could claim middle, uh, depending on where you put the dividing lines, but yeah, you're not middle. <laughs> you're barely above broke. Or, or a job just over broke, yeah. Um, anyway, the economy is showing signs of turning, and the people who saw the least benefit from the latest boom are now the most vulnerable ahead of the next bus. Bust. We got a picture of Trump here. It says, uh, Trump stops to talk to reporters and members of the media as he walks to Marine One to depart from the South Lawn. I don't know why they put his face in there, and he's got a really ugly face. Of course, Rolling Stone is uh, not really a fan of the Trumpster as, well, I'm not either. All right. Market watchers enjoy enjoying their first sip of coffee around 6 a.m. might have done a spit take. For a brief period Wednesday morning, yields on the two-year Treasury bonds were higher than those on the 10-year ones. Oops. That can't be good. <laughs> that can't be good at all. Uh, if Just if you don't understand what that means there, that normally... On a two-year bond, you get a, a lower payout, a, a lower return, a lower yield, because of the fact that you're you're not putting your money out there for so long, and and because of that, they, you 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 get less reward. It's just it's just how it's supposed to work. 
how it normally works. And you get this little backwardation situation going on uh, where 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 these two years are paying more than the ten year ones. Where you got five times the length, you got to have that money held in check. But you're okay with it because you know you're getting whatever percentage, three, four, five percent. I don't even know if there's a five percent anymore, but um, you're getting a, a more, more, more of a payback. So you're okay putting that money out there for ten years. It's like fine. I know I'm getting all my money back plus whatever percentage I was promised when when I purchased the bond. On a two-year one, you, it's the same thing. It's just, it's just a, such a shorter time that you don't expect to get as much back. But that was not the case here on this day. The short-term investment was seen as riskier than the long-term one, and the return, therefore, higher. <laughs> a signal that can portend a major trouble for the economy, as well it should. The last time yields were inverted was in 2007, before the Great Recession. The two times before that, they also directly preceded recessions. The dynamic flipped back before markets opened on that day, but stocks nevertheless dropped amid new fears of a serious economic troubles ahead. According to research from Credit Suisse via the Washington Post, recessions historically have followed 18 to 24 months after the yield curve inversions, like the one that happened that day. Before we get too carried away, it is worth mentioning that there are some who argue that the yield curve invert is not as reliable as a recession indicator as it's generally made out to be. No, it's not reliable. It just always seems to happen, right? That's not reliable. <laughs> For, former Fed Chair uh, Janet Yellen struck a note of caution during Wednesday's uh, uh, appearance on Fox Business. Historically, it has been a pretty good signal of recession, and it 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 and it thinks that what. I don't know what she's saying there. And it think that's when markets pay attention to it. But I would really urge that on this occasion, it may be a less good signal. Really, Janet? Really? Because why? She says, the reason for that is that there are a number of factors other than the market expectations about the future path of interest rates that are pushing down long-term yields. And pushing up short-term yields? You're not making sense, Janet. You're making nonsense is what you're making. But sooner or later, the current economic expansion, by many measures, the longest in U.S. history, is going to end. No shit, Dick Tracy. And that's particularly troubling when you consider how many Americans continue to fare poorly, even in the current strong economy. Some 40% of American families struggled to cover the cost of food, health care, housing, and utilities last year. According to a report from the Urban Institute, a Fed found 4 in 10 adults could not cover $400 emergency expense, even at the current low unemployment rate. About 6 million workers are actively looking for jobs right now, and that does not include part-time workers looking for more hours or those who want work but have stopped looking, those that are no longer in the employment pool, as they say. Men in the prime of their lives are unemployed at lower rates than they were before the last recession. However, suicide rates are spiking driving down U.S. life expectancy. Now, I don't know what that has to do with the recession, but they put it here in the article. Okay, most people, uh, men at the, in the prime of their lives, are employed at lower rates, meaning they're, they're, they're not as many of them working uh, because they're no longer in the employment pool. And they just throw this comment about suicide rates in there uh, making causation from correlation where it doesn't belong. 
The Gallup poll released in January found 48% of Americans felt economic conditions were worsening. <laughs> All right. Uh, th this is a month ago, you know, uh, a month, barely a month ago. And, 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 and uh, just some things have changed. So, so some things have, some things are no longer the same. Um, yeah. I don't know why the uh, Trump's name is in the URL there. Um, because his name's not in the title of the article. <laughs> but like I said, they got a big picture of him there on, on the page. So uh, feel free. Go ahead. Take a look. If you want to see. Her. I mean, he does not look good. But as I, as I pointed out, uh, the Rolling Stone is no fan of the Trumpster. <laughs> All right, on to on to one of Flash, Flash's favorite topics: red flag laws, or how to repeal the Second Amendment Soviet style without any of that pesky voting stuff. <laughs> uh, now you see all these red flags, trouble spots, South Southeastern Asia, the Caribbean, the Congo. I'll give you one guess as to who's responsible. Dr. Goldfoot in the bikini mat machine is a, that's a little quote from that. <laughs> oh, and they got a picture of uh, here of uh, Jack from the shining saying, I look much better after I've had a cup of coffee and after I found my ax. All right, Frogger. I know that you, gentle reader, have thoughts about guns that are probably pretty, pretty similar to mine. So I'd like to take you on a short walk through history, specifically the history of politics and psychiatry. I promise it will make more sense than the lyrics to Manfred Mann's song, Blinded by the Light. What the hell is a go-kart Mozart, and why in the hell is he checking out the weather chart anyway? <laughs> I have seen a person suffering from schizophrenia to such a degree that uh, they were sure that MTV video stars were stealing songs directly from their brains, and that they were also a surgeon who regularly performed operations on world leaders and stored their organs in the freezer for safekeeping. If no one has ever told you that there are human organs belonging to world leaders in their fridge, in a completely matter-of-fact, would-you-like-a-glass-of-water voice, well, all I can tell you is that my first thought was one of, the, of complete disbelief that I had heard them right. Yes, I asked them to repeat that statement twice. I walked over, checked out their freezer. Thankfully, the only thing in things in it were some frozen pizzas and ancient ice cubes. I assure you, I was was talking to their shrink that afternoon, and that they were involuntarily committed uh, by 5 p.m. They were helped, and after being put on some appropriately industrial levers levels of antipsychotic medication did okay enough to be released back into the wild as long as they stayed on their meds. I know there's actually crazy people that really need help. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? I also know this. Psychiatry is still the most politically abused medical profession. Examples of political abuse of psychiatry. There are many. Uh, when I mentioned this topic to the missus, she immediately said, the Soviet Union. And that's the example I thought of first, too. The Soviets systematically used diagnosis of psychological disorders such as philosophical intoxication. Philosophical intoxication. And sluggish schizophrenia to put people who didn't like Marxism into mental institutions. 
And no, those diagnoses aren't lame jokes. Those were real, really Soviet-era diagnoses. How many were caught up in the psychological gulags? We really don't know, since those records are secret. But in 1978, at least 4.5 million Soviet citizens were listed as having mental health problems. In 1988, perhaps thinking that they might face their own version of a Soviet Nuremberg trials for crimes against humanity, Soviet leaders had over 800,000 patients removed from the list of the mentally ill. Paperwork error? Surely. Did the Soviets condemn thousands of, uh, with false diagnosis? Nearly certainly, absolutely certainly. Hundreds of thousands, very likely. Uh, millions? Probably. Think of it. Millions of people falsely diagnosed with a mental illness due to political beliefs sent to asylums and work camps. Certainly, some were executed. The Soviets allowed, allowed, allowed ownership of smoothbore weapons for hunting, except when they didn't, which was most of the time. Oh, and the definition of sweet summer child is a person who doesn't know the hardships of winter, often used when someone has no experience with a particular stressful thing, which may describe a generation that rhymes with perennial. Okay, that's just the Soviet Union, right? No, Cuba did the same thing. There's evidence that China is still doing it, and likely on scale similar to that of the Soviet Union. Thankfully, the World Psychiatric Association took the lead on investigations. What? Oh, sorry, they didn't. The World Psych Psychiatry Association pretty much ignored it and said that uh, people associated with the Falun, Gu Falun Gong are nuts and that putting them in asylums run by the state security apparatus not the medical directorate, was perfectly normal. One flew east, one flew west, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. If you haven't ever seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, yeah, yeah, you need to watch that one. Or read the book, whichever. Okay, that's just China. Thankfully, this, is, this would never happen in the U.S. of A., it could never happen here. <laughs> oh, it did. Sure, in the 1920s, dissidents, like the ones who pr protested the trial of Sacco and Vanzanetti, were put into asylums. In the 1960s, members of the American Psychological Association smeared presidential candidate Barry Goldwater in the press by diagnosing him. But that wasn't political. Right? <laughs> Thankfully, it's not happening now. Oh, in 2012, a whistleblower with the NYPD uh, was railroaded on mental health. Ouch. But New York is corrupt. It would never happen based on political motives. Right? <laughs> Dinesh D'Souza, author and filmmaker on the right, was convicted of a crime based on giving too much money to a political campaign. He admitted he was wrong. The federal judge involved in the case sentenced D'Souza not only to prison, he sentenced D'Souza to years of mental health counseling, despite a licensed psychologist saying that D'Souza the, 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 the the was just fine mentally. So, yes, psychiatry is a political weapon. It's not like the left has sentenced political opponents to chemotherapy, but I hear they are working on that. <laughs> yes, this is a common sense way to use psychiatry. This corrupt branch of medicine is the background of the red flag laws. The idea is that we'll create laws to remove rights from people without any due process, with the presumption that the individuals should lose a right guaranteed by the Constitution, registered trademark, 
a single accuser with no evidence can result in gun confiscation to a law-abiding citizen. Sadly, this already happens. People with contested domestic restraining orders, a uh, standard tactic in divorces nowadays, uh, lose their rights. Although I've heard of people fighting these orders and winning, at least there's a pretense uh, of some maybe minor amount of due process. The claim that the ability to strip people of rights won't be used, it won't be abused, is laughable. In every country that it's been infected by psychiatry, it has been twisted to meet political ends. Yes, there are crazy people. I've seen one as related above. And if you did a brain scan, there is a physical basis for schizophrenia. It's real. It's a medical condition. But remember, these are the same psychiatrists that would diagnose me as nuts if I believed I, I was five years older than I really am, but are, perf are perfectly fine with children younger than the age of five claiming they are a different sex than their genetics have made them. Furthermore, the medical profession as a whole is maybe a bit, well, mental. In one study, it was claimed that 50% of female doctors could be diagnosed with a mental di disease. I wonder again why my ex didn't take up medicine. <laughs> oh, and the psychologists have uh, nearly the highest rate of suicide of any profession. Yes, any profession, including people who make balloon animals in uh, uh, Disneyland. For chubby children with hands sticky from chocolate ice cream, perfectly stable. And this is also the same profession whose international govern governing body was just fine with political repression in the name of psychiatry. Besides being oppressive, the red flag laws would not have helped in the latest shootings in any of them. Uh, these people lawfully and legally got their rifles but they will form the basis for taking away guns for conspiracy theories. Ha! Huh. Believing anything other than the official narrative uh, will become the basis for exclusion of lawful firearms ownership, despite the fact that throughout history, many conspiracy theories have been proven true. Just check out MKUltra. That happened. But the FBI is now warning that you are a danger if you don't believe the official narrative. Antisocial behavior. Ever not want to hang around people? You're antisocial. And that's dangerous, citizen. No AR for you. Websites visited? <laughs> Going to unapproved sites? Thinking unapproved thoughts? Glock block. Yes, I said Glock Block. Comments made when you were 16. Wow. Did you really say that maybe the Crusades weren't all bad? Nah, no pew pew for you, hater. Not believing in the Easter uh, socialism? Well, I think I covered that above. The irony is this. Uh, well, th this will have the impact of keeping people away from mental health professionals. This will keep people from seeking help when they're a little depressed because of the consequences of having a health record might prevent uh, them from a future opportunity. The only safe way to live life would be to stay away from health professionals and not answer certain questions your MD might have for you with the polite BFYTW when asked wh wh why you're not answering. Oh, but that probably puts you on a anti-socialist. Now, those things, conspiracy theories, yes, me. Anti-social behavior, yes, me. Going to unapproved websites, yes, me. I don't remember anything I said when I was 16, so I can't really get into that one. But not believing in socialism, absolutely me.
<laughs> there is more to the story, and you can uh, go through it if you like. I've got, I'm going a couple minutes over here, uh, just because I, I got to quickly hit on these other uh, things I have for you. Um, and this for the, I got I got three three quick things just to just to smack you with. This is posted on the G the, or the Gateway Pundit uh, dot com, and the article is this. You can browse the list for yourself. See who they are. <laughs> Here it is. Complete list of Clinton associates who allegedly died mysteriously or committed suicide before testimony, including Mr. Epstein. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice little list. I, I, they say it's complete. I'm not sure how complete it really is, but uh, it, it's it's a it's a good good thing for you to glance through, uh, and I, just to, just to get the overall scope of it. Uh, and see, they only list 46 here in this list, uh, and and I know it's it's much higher number than that. So uh, go ahead and feel free to browse uh, through the the list of Epstein's not Epstein the Clintons. Uh, Murder list, if you will. This is an important uh, public safety notice, I guess, for those of you using Windows, uh, any version of Windows, by the way, um, Windows operating system. All Microsoft certified drivers from Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, and others are vulnerable. I do believe I actually talked about this on the Freakers Ball, but it was still in my list. So just to be positive that, that it was covered, I wanted you guys to know that if you have these, uh, well, if, you have, if you're running Windows, uh, this is the situation there. Um, and uh, you should certainly look for whatever patches uh, and, and make sure that your uh, security software is up to date at all times. All right, and lastly, but not leastly, if you have children, if you have teens, or if you know teens, or if you got nieces, nephews, grandchildren, I don't know, uh, whatever they are, uh, they want to be aware of this, or you want to be aware so that you could make them aware. Uh, this common mineral may damage teen brains. It's something called manganese. It's this micro mineral could be doing micro damage. So researchers found that the, uh, Childhood exposure to the mineral manganese can potentially impact their motor control and brain functions, specifically memory. So, it, the manganese is in lots of foods. Uh, looks like a lot of seafoods, coffee, pepper, soybeans, and such. Uh, just be careful what you feed your kids and uh, grandkids, whoever, whoever, teens, and... Uh, I don't know how how accurate the article is, but uh, that's what they're saying here. So bear that in mind. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in here to the episode 39 of Grim Leftovers. I'll be back next Monday with episode 40. You baby. Um, <laughs> and uh, coming up later on this week, we got uh, Prince and Poopster doing the Power Hour Thursday evening at 11 p.m. Eastern. Vincent Easley will be on during the afternoon on Friday with a ponder gander, uh, closing out his black and white series there at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, myself and the Moose Girl will be on Friday night, 11 p.m. Eastern with the Freakers Ball. Don't miss it. It's a grand old time. Let me tell you, I'm going to try and convince somebody to uh, pick up the mantle of the dork table, whether it's Moose Girl or not, on Saturday afternoon, Saturday noontime. Uh, so hopefully we'll uh, get the uh, the dork table back in action. That's a fun show, and, and it's good for a Friday, for a Saturday morning. I'll be on Sunday with the Blues as always uh, at noon Eastern for three hours there, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. That's it. Thank you all so much. Have yourselves a great night and a great week. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs>